Let's uh, interact with the panel here. Yes. Trey Gowdy is here. You know, what about that point about third party RFK Jr. tries, first of all, the Democrats try to prevent him from getting on the ballot. And then the Democrats try to prevent him from getting off the ballot. Now, he's on the ballot in Michigan and Wisconsin, also Minnesota. But um, Michigan, Wisconsin, obviously, if it comes down to really tight, that could make a difference. Why would anyone vote for someone who doesn't want to be the president and has asked you not to? I, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Who are these 0.4% that are voting for someone <laughs> who has begged you not to vote for him? If you want to see him in Washington, don't vote for him. But it reminds me of Jill Stein. I mean, I think Jill Stein cost Hillary Clinton a state. I know that Ross Perot cost Bush a presidential election. Um, I, I was in the, in the green room, Brett, doing what I did in high school, which is finding the two smartest kids in the class and sitting in between them and looking on their papers. That's McCarthy and Rove. There may be a 269 tie. I know nobody wants to hear that, but, but there is a scenario okay. under which there <laughs> will be a topic tie. for discussion tonight. <laughs> Sean, you want to move on? Yeah, I think we can move on from that. <laughs> yeah. I don't think anyone really wants that. But actually, I would accept that because that would end up in the House of Representatives, and I'd say our Republican odds at that point would be pretty good. Um, it is a very dysfunctional house, but I think they could coalesce around that, yes. I think, uh, I think they would. What are you yeah. looking at, Brett? Well, eight years ago, you may remember, it was a while before we sensed that the Trump upset was, was happening. And one of the earliest indicators we got was from the betting odds, which I was at a farther point on the, on the panel that night. <laughs> By the time you got to me, about everything smart had been said. <laughs> so I started talking about the betting odds. Well, I've followed them ever since. Tonight, as we started this broadcast, Trump stood a 58% chance, according to the betting odds, of winning the election. As, of, as I read this off the screen now, 69.2%. So whoever's doing the betting out there and affecting these odds is increasingly of the view that he will win the election. And how much does it impact it that, you know, it's, it's the first year that you're seeing some of these, the, these betting markets in the United States? Because... Well, There's this, a lot of people who are playing them probably this, this in a is bet, fundamental this, way. These odds composed by Maxim Lott and John Stossel are from Bedfair, Smarkets, Predicted, Polymarket, Kalshi, and, and... It's a basket. It's a basket. It's an average. Dana, what are you we'll looking see. at? I am looking at some of the, just on X, watching some of the Democrats complain about the Electoral College. <laughs> and, you know, if... There, there, about a week ago, there was some conventional wisdom that she could actually win the Electoral College, but that Trump would win the popular vote. And then there would be no complaints about the Electoral College from them <laughs> if that were to happen. So obviously it's too soon to call, but I'm certainly watching that to see what they're going to say. Plus, I have been wondering about Kamala Harris and this whole decision of Biden to run again when she knew that he was incapable, but they were still asking their donors Give us all your money. He's okay for four more years. And obviously he wasn't. But then that did not leave her enough time, apparently, that's another complaint that they have, for her to, I, to introduce herself, even though they had over a billion dollars to do it. And they had 100 days, Harold, and um, she passed up a lot of opportunities early on. I think we went for, I don't know, 40 days or something with no press conference, and it took a really long time for her to finally sit down with Brett and have a substantive interview. I mean, there was time. Sure. Again, we're acting like this thing is over. I, no, I hear no, you. no, no, we're not. No, we're not. not. I'm just, so, I'm just playing but, off of Dana's point. But I, in but I do of... think after the debate, she performed so well against Trump. Uh, she asked for another debate. I thought that, that, that the interview that Brett did with her was as substantive an interview as we've seen with her yes. throughout the, the last several years. You would have thought because she did well there that she would want to go and do more of them. But more interviews. Uh, more interviews to sit after down and talk. After the one with Brett? After the one with Brett. <laughs> she booted the question about when she first knew that he was not himself. Well, I, thought, well, I, I, I have a slightly different opinion on that. I thought she did. She gave She gave in that at, that interview. And I thought if I were her, I'd have gotten out and done more. But she did some. She, did and didn't, she was so she, cautious. She gave, a pre, I, I, she gave a pre-debate answer. She I, said, Biden's great. He's fine. I've seen him do all this wonderful Brett, stuff. I would have done it very differently than her. I'm However, I'm sure the you way, would the, But the way she did it. <laughs> She didn't. She put herself in a position to be 50-50 here this evening. And if we're to believe Trey, this thing could be listening to the two smart guys in the green room. It could be 269, 269. She must have done something right. I still look at Michigan and Pennsylvania and Wisconsin. Since 1980, those three states have not gone all together other than 1988. Dukakis got Wisconsin and H.W. won the other two. 
If the numbers are tracking right and continue along those lines, we could find ourselves in a, in a position where we're, we're having a, a conversation about a Congress. Then it would be curious, Sean, if the Democrats win the House. How does that play into it? Look, I hope we don't get there because I don't want this fight. It'd be I, the country but doesn't the need this division. But the House does the president and the Senate does the vice president. So you could end up yeah. with President Trump and Vice President Harris. But they vote after, <laughs> they vote <laughs> after the election. They vote right. after the election, right. and it's right. only one vote per delegation. Right. But we'll cross that bridge when we come yeah. to it. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.